cool kids talking about the cool kids that's you guys you guys are the cool kids and we are going to continue our lovely series the uh painting of the purple worm not to be confused with the river has. Now, now both of these are worms, but not both of these are purple. <laughs> Quite the opposite, really. And uh, well, at the end of the day, <sighs> they don't really live in the same climes, if I remember right. But, you never know. Things meet all the time, don't they? Summoning spell. Shenanigans. I think... Just between you, me, and that wall, I think the purple worm would win that fight. But you can argue about it in the comments. I don't believe the rumor has is going to be able to swallow the uh, purple worm hole. And at the end of the day, that poisonous stinger on the back end is really where the that and the size difference. But you know, the rumor has has that heat attack. So you know, I'm giving it a little credit here. But, uh, it's an ambush predator, and it can't ambush something that much bigger than it is. So it wouldn't even, they, they wouldn't even, shouldn't even encounter each other, honestly. Unless, of course, the purple worm was the instigator, in which case, well, <laughs> happy trails. <sighs> so, guys... Our next step, I've decided, is we're going to paint these stones. Okay, there's all these stones on the base. And we're going to paint them. It's going to be amazing. And I want to hit the, the base stone here with a layer of black. So we'll do all that in this video. And maybe, maybe something else if, if the mood strikes me. You know, if the mood strikes me, we'll see what happens. Uh, I notice, I watch uh, other videos, and I guess, you know, they do a lot of editing, and, you know, skip steps. I try to do that where I can. You know, like, I don't want you guys to have to watch me paint two models doing the exact same thing. You know, that's not good. But, on the other hand, I don't want to... You know, skip over stuff. That's not good. That's not the game we should be playing. We should be playing a totally different game. And that game is where you get to see what we're up to with this uh, painting deal. So, we're going to use Dark Stone from uh, War Paint, the Army Painter War Paint series. And I'm trying to decide if I want to layer this guy up or do, you know, some speed painting techniques. Um, I don't know that there's going to be a huge difference in the final product. And there's plenty of texture on this model to really take advantage of. So I might do a bit of both, <laughs> you know. Um, but this is where we're at so far. You know, purple worms. Now, if I was smart, I would have grabbed the uh, Gore Maw or whatever, the Reaper. Big old purple worm and painted it too. But you know what? That can be for another day. Let me know in the comments if you're really interested in seeing that. But yeah, Dark Stone is our next color. This is Dark Stone. And bruh. 
brush. Brush me. Brush me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Roll me through the night. Brush me. Brush me. You really got to shake up these uh, army painter paints. So. I'm sure you all remember that. Yeah, dark stone. And what all we're doing, guys, is painting these rocks a dark stone color. Man, it really is that simple. You know, no need to make things difficult. No, no, no need to make things tricky. This is not a tricky gig. This is just uh, some dark stone on the stone, man. This isn't going to take too terribly long, guys. No. Now, if I were editing, I would just fast forward this. You could, uh, you know, see it faster. But then I couldn't have our lovely discussions, guys. We can talk about great things like the migratory patterns of swallows whether they be African or European you know these kind of things the good stuff in life you know uh, talk about our thoughts and our feelings how do we feel about uh, all that inflation guys you know uh, have you uh, have you guys been pricing <laughs> groceries lately I uh and I got to tell you, I, I went to the grocery store today. I said, owie. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and not just that. Items I normally see aren't there. They're just not there. Tried to get uh, all beef franks. Um, the brand I wanted, it wasn't there. So I had to grab this other brand that costs about 30% more. Um, reason we're doing all beef around my house is, well... Um, uh, well, I think, uh, personally, I think they taste better. Have you guys tried the old beef? Now, you know the ones that I used to eat years ago? The bison hot dogs. Have you guys had these? Yeah. Bison hot dogs. Now, I only bought them when they went on sale. Um, manager special. And they'd mark them half off. And let me tell you guys that, but Walmart doesn't sell the bison dogs and I don't even know if they still make them but uh yeah a pack of those back then right which this will tell you how long ago this was five dollars for ten wieners now that was big money back then you know for a pack of hot dogs I would wait till they went half off I'd get them for 250 and even that was higher than, you know, the old pork and chicken dogs. Um, but, man, oh, man. <laughs> you can't even look at hot dogs for that now. You know, even on that high end. Yeah. Let alone taste the hot dog. Yeah, they're just... It's a whole brave new world out there. Yeah, it was back when I first got out of the army. I uh, loved me some bison hot dogs, man. Yeah, that was a special occasion there. Yeah, and they go on sale a couple every what five or six months, man. I'd go in there and I yeah and I'd freeze. I'd freeze all the wieners that I couldn't eat right off. Yeah. And uh, that's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it. Yeah, it's got to be patient. Delay that gratification just a little bit. 
You know, some folks in it, you guys are like, why didn't you just buy the wieners whenever you wanted them? Well, the thing about that is, is you're paying double what you should be paying for them fancy wieners. So, you know, if it was a special occasion, sure. I never did, but you, I could see it. But you gotta realize, I, I bought the store out on them. When they went on sale, I'd be eating them sweet uh, bison dogs for a minute for lunch at work. Now, back then, I worked at uh, the ADM, if I remember right. That's a, well, I, I worked for a contractor. Yeah, doing all that manual labor. Yeah, those were the days. Yeah. Yeah, doing that electrical work. Nowadays, I, I think with my noodle more. There's some thinking to the other stuff too, though, right? I mean, obviously, it's not all. But, uh, not all. <laughs> You know, lackey stuff, uh, the old uh, brutish menial stuff. I mean, there was a little little noodle work involved. But, uh, you know, you had to put some elbow grease, uh, bending conduit and, you know, getting that wire bundled up and ready to go. Tightening the fasteners and cutting your flex tubing just right to make all the happiness about. Oh, yeah. Eh. You know, manual dexterity was required. All these great things. And, you know, uh, working with your hands, you know, it's just not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. The downside I can see is it puts a wear on you that you know like you see them old timers that have been working the the menial tasks all their days like you, you, you go talk to an old roofer you know go go look at an old roofer see how they're doing not all jobs are equal you know there's this uh, talk about equal pay well do the equal work you know uh, you want equal pay for all jobs well that's just not how the job market works some jobs are harder less desirable uh, to work in but more desirable as far as the output you know more necessary I guess that's what I'm saying you know basket weaving isn't all that necessary we, we don't really need that you know, you could argue about mental health uh, assistance, but, uh, you know, counselors and whatnot, this kind of stuff. You could argue about the efficacy of, of having a lot of that. Ooh, a spider. Shoot. Ah, uh, like a house spider, but it could have been a brown recluse. No, it was just a house spider. And it's totally in my painting space. That's okay. I had to. I caught a mouse today. Weird little mouse, you know. I got. It was. Uh, it had a white belly. I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, ever really looked at mice, but you don't see that all the time. Yeah, it was. It was like a domestic tame mouse was bred with a wild mouse, like a field mouse, and the, yeah, the result was this kind of hybrid mouse. It had uh, the back of its legs and underbelly were white, like white as could be. Horrible camouflage. But the back and head were all, you know, just your normal, you know, house mouse, field mouse, whatever you want to call it, looking mouse. And I'm like, and the thing, it was a male. I don't know if you guys know this, but the males, they're more aggressive. The females are pretty docile when you catch them. They don't tend to try to bite you too much. Males actively, like, shift their body to go into an attack position. And they will bite right into you. Uh, you'll get a nice piercing from a male mouse. 
uh, you know, it's not going to, your main concern is going to be getting some kind of disease from it. There's a few bacteria they can carry. But, uh, you know, it's not going to do, like, a mortal wound to you. But definitely uh, get your attention. Um, I speak from experience. So, yeah, I got these, uh, I'm removing these mice from my house. Um, and I don't want to kill them. You know, so I've been doing these live traps. But then I got to remove them, so. And, uh, I got to give them a bath with, uh, the old, uh, soap. So I take them outside and I give them that quick, give them a quick bath with the soap, the Dawn soap, so that the sticky stuff comes off of them. And, uh. You know, I've mastered it now. I got it down to a science. Uh, gloves are involved, but... Um, you know, they're delicate. Um, and you have to be careful. Otherwise, you're going to really hurt the mouse getting it off of there. But I, I've got it down. I've even, I've even taken baby mice off there without incident. Now, the baby mice, they're very interesting because they just squeak. They don't really try to fight. They just try to squeak maybe you know an instinct to get mom or dad to come along I don't know I don't think that would work in the wild too well because mom and dad ain't gonna do boo but they just sit there and squeak until they they kind of realize you're not gonna hurt them after a little bit yeah so the little baby mice you can kind of play with oh, they're fine Males, they never really calm down. The females can get really docile, too. Uh, they're hit and miss. Uh, some of the females are cool. Some of them will actually head back towards you after you set them loose a little bit, like they want to hang out somewhere. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, now, guys, it appears um, I'm, I'm not going to get to it, but this bottom base right here, I'm going to paint it black. And for our next video, we'll have all that done. And I'll show it to you and we'll get on to the next step. We're gonna, I think we're going to do some dry brushing up here on the, the purple part of the worm. I got some nice colors picked out. Um, as you know, we, we use mostly... Um, well, to be fair, this is all craft paint. All this is craft paint. Um the cheap stuff from Walmart, the apple barrel. And it, as you can see, it works just, just fine for this kind of stuff. You know, I wouldn't want it for like, you know, doing eyes or something fancy, but great for like terrain, this kind of, this kind of stuff here. It's, it's really just fine at also, uh, a little life hack for you. I know I'm using Reaper's black paint a lot. That's only cause I have it. The, because of the level of pigmentation involved, the Apple Barrel Black paint is actually, I mean, I, there's no discernible difference. I've kind of tested this and you, there's no, I can't tell the difference between the cheap paints. Now white, there's a big difference. Uh, so it depends on the color. Um, you know, your yellows and stuff like that, you probably don't want to use that apple barrel stuff. But blacks and browns and stuff, I don't, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, and if you're, you know, you, if you're doing a lot of terrain, like a lot of terrain, you cannot go wrong with those uh, paints for your base coats and stuff. You just can't. Because if it's just terrain, it's background stuff, then you're not going to sit there and do high detail paint jobs on it. I mean, there's literally no reason not to use the 50 cent. I don't know how much it is now. It used to be like 50 cents per tube. Uh, here, I'll show it to you. I got some. <laughs> I was using some the other day. Matter of fact, I was doing someone's fingernails. Uh, you can catch that. So yeah, this stuff here, 50 cents a tube. 
shake it up, put it on. And yeah, you can do fingernails with it too. <laughs> you know, works fine. It works fine. And it's, it's, you know, it's a little runny. You don't need to add water to it. I'll say that. Uh, certain colors. Now other, co you know, it's it's hit and miss. Um, there we go, uh, guys. I think we got a pretty good coat of. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we run our 20 minutes, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you find all the measures of your dreams. Um, we're going to continue this series as I paint up these models, and uh, hopefully we'll get it done this week. Um, take care.